It is a hot and muggy morning here in the mountains of southern Appalachia. We've been under a little heat wave. I know a lot of you have been too. So the temperatures have been really hot. It's hottest weather definitely we've had this year so far. And we've been really dry, which is unusual for us. We typically get rain at least, you know, every three or four days. It's probably been a week and a half since we've we've had one thunderstorm during that week and a half so things are dry the garden is still though progressing nicely and i'm going to walk around and show you how things are growing i'll start right here with these wonderful uh, roses people have been asking how they're doing they are doing beautiful you can see the lovely coral blooms the yellow ones are not blooming as much as the coral and betty told me that they wouldn't that they wasn't as prolific as the coral but so i might regret planting them but I, I think when they do bloom the contrast between the two will just be lovely this is the crimson sweet watermelon that we planted there's about three in there we planted they were from Betty and Pat they're doing really good growing out into the yard got blooms all over them I have been trying to water the grow bag since we've not been getting as much rain so far these watermelons are looking great right here is our little section of greasy beans we didn't plant very many of them we have one little cattle panel full but you can see they're just beginning to bloom i see some blooms on some of the others and you can see how tall they've reached the top of the cattle panel and they're about to go over the other side our blackberries are just beginning to get ripe. Still hadn't managed to clean out the bed that they're in, but the berries are looking good. This part of the garden is so beautiful. I've so enjoyed coming out here and sitting and just enjoying the, the lovely grandeur of this time of the year. Our herb bed is just full, busting over with the things getting ready to bloom. Some things are blooming. Then the cucumbers that are in the raised bed with the trellis, they're starting to climb up. All the nasturtiums and the onions and the um, things that the radishes we planted in there, they're all growing wonderfully. And then all the flowers that I've added back here are just in full bloom and they're so, so lovely. This is the little cone flower that I accidentally pulled up. You can see it is living. I planted it right here in Katie's little garden. And Katie's beautiful poppies are still blooming and the bees are still having a heyday on them. They're so lovely. In the herb bed, I have some more cone flowers and they're all getting ready to, got buds on them getting ready to bloom. I've got some dill back there in the back. I really cut back my sage, so that's why it looks kind of stunted. Partially growing good. Also behind the parsley, I need to kind of cut it back. There's some basil growing. And this plant with the giant leaves, a lot of people was asking about it. You can see it's blooming now. That is clary sage, clary sage. It does have some gigantic leaves. A lot of people was asking about the white blooms too where Matt and I have been sitting. This is fleabane. That's just a weed. A weed. It just come up there, but it was so pretty. I just couldn't bear to pull it up. It's starting to, to lose its bloom now, but it is a lovely little plant. Then on this end of the herb bed, we've got some lemon balm and then that wonderful hyssop that I got from Betty and Pat last year. It's not blooming yet, but I know it won't be long before it does. This is a great view of the cucumbers right here. You can really see how tall they are, how wonderful they're doing, covered with blooms and some little bitty tiny cucumbers too. There's the nasturtiums in the corner. They're starting to, starting to flow out. We're still enjoying the onions. This is the silver slicer cucumbers. I think if we could get a rain, we'd just have tons of cucumbers. But right here is a little bitty tiny one. You can see the bloom's still attached, but you can see the tiny cucumber right there. There's another little cucumber over on this side and lots of blooms to go with it. This is the first nasturtium. So I get to see the first nasturtium while I'm showing you. Isn't it lovely? Look at that beautiful like apricot color. Another one about to bloom right there and right there in front of it, but so pretty. It's the first bloom that I've noticed on the nasturtiums. This is the strawberry bed that I planted and they've been looking really pitiful because I cut them back and then because it's been so dry, I have been watering them a lot though, but I can see some new growth on them this morning. So hopefully I didn't kill them all. And that one's got some new growth too. Definitely a good sign. 
Another thing that I've really tried to keep moist and watered is this flower bed where I planted the flowers. I've definitely tried to water the live plants. You know, I wanted those to live, but also all the seeds that I planted. You can see some of the seeds coming up right there. Up here in the front are all the marigolds I planted. They're coming up. The little moss roses I planted are looking really good. And I'm really excited to learn from many of you who told me that they reseed their self at your house. So hopefully they'll do that for me. This is our Tommy Toe bed of tomatoes. You can see they're doing really well. In fact, they're growing so tall that they're about to reach the top of the T-post. The Tommy Toes are starting to set fruit too. Those will be the first ones that get ripe, I'm sure. This is our little pepper bed, one of them. They're doing good. I can't believe how tall this one's got. The one in the middle there is an orange bell pepper. We just planted it and it was, it's why it's so small. I'd left it in its little cup for way, way too long. But the gypsy peppers you can see are producing and we have found them to be really, really prolific. In fact, I need to pick some of those. This is the area right in front of Matt's wonderful Cherokee purple. And you can see we have a good stand of purslane. Purslane is a weed, but it's edible. It's tasty. I like it in salads. I've even cooked it before. I've got a video, I think, about that. It's tasty like that, too. And I think it's a pretty little plant. It's pretty. This is one of the Malabar spinach plants. You can see how tall it's getting. Before long, it will reach the cattle panel and start growing up over the arch. This is the green stalk that I planted uh, nasturtiums in and also thyme and basil. And you can see some things coming up right there. I see something coming up right there, but that doesn't really look like anything I planted. That may be a, a holdover from the strawberries. A little bit more growth there, but no nasturtiums yet that I can see. Matt's Cherokee purple tomatoes are looking really good getting taller by the day. There's lots of blooms. I only see one or two small tomatoes, but lots and lots of blooms. So hopefully that means he's gonna have a lot of tomatoes. This is the potatoes that we have planted in the ground. They're still doing good. All of the ones that we have in the grow bags are, they're so tall and they've already bloomed that they've fallen over. And I'm just hoping that we've got lots of good potatoes underneath. Blueberries are still looking great. None ripe yet, but hopefully before long we'll be able to enjoy some of the early varieties. Another thing that's still looking great is our grapes. We're gonna have a ton of grapes this year. This is one of the areas that we have totally let get out of hand. It is just a jungle. And we worked really hard last year to fight it all back. But as you can see, it's turned into a jungle again. There's a rose bush in there. There's a lot of blackberries, wild blackberries. And there's a terrible vine. I don't know what what the name of it even is, but it grows and it's just almost impossible to eradicate. And it's just took over. My poor rose bush, you can't even see that it's there. More blueberries down here. And you can see there's one that's almost ripe, almost getting ripe. So exciting. The tomatoes down here that have not been looking as good up there, I think they're looking slightly better since we fertilized them. That may just be in my imagination though, Matt would say. That's probably just my hopeful, hopeful, wishful thinking. A lot of you said we should add calcium. Need to do that. I also thought about getting some, and this would be easy for me to do, is getting some of the chicken compost and bringing it down here. Some that's been sitting out back where we cleaned out the last time and putting it around each tomato plant. This part of the garden is looking really great. We have that long row of cabbage. Then the next row is actually a row of okery. And then the next row is our beets. Our beets look great this year. And I think it's because I planted them when the dogwoods were blooming. Thank you so much to the person that told me that. From now on, that's when I'm going to plant them. 
The beans down here are really doing good. The rattlesnake beans, a lot of them have reached the top trellis and are bending over. On the back row, the butter beans, the preacher beans, uh, the mother, I'm calling the mother beans. This is the year for mothers at our house for sure. They're all doing good. I'm so excited about them, especially those new varieties, the mother one, uh, that one, and then some of the new ones we planted up at the top. I'm so excited to actually taste them and see if, if that becomes a new favorite. Now, as you've been walking around the garden with me, you've probably noticed all the, the little streamers that we've put up. We've put them about on all the, all the garden beds and also on the uh, blueberries, some of the berries. And these were sent to us by one of our friends, Deb, and we're so glad that uh, she sent them to us. We've got more we need to put up. We've not put any up at the big garden. But the reason we went ahead and put them up was for one thing, the birds eating my blue jays after my blueberries, after our blueberries. So we wanted to make sure we got that took care of before they got any of them. And it seems to have helped. They've not been as many blue jays around. And then also, you know, if you watch all of our videos, you know me and Granny jumped the little deer down at her house. Well, they've been just hanging around. Now they've not been in our garden and they've not eaten anything, but there's a little buck and he's just been hanging around in between mine and Granny's house. He's been out uh, at Austin and Corey's and so far he's not really eat anything but he's just kind of hanging around so I'm like well let's make sure that he doesn't eat anything so that was one of the reasons well every time the wind blows it uh, these flow in the wind and also I didn't realize this would happen but inside the house because that happens when the wind's blowing you can see there's sparkles inside the house so uh, an interesting byproduct of us trying to ward off the deer from the garden this has become one of my favorite views. Every time I come outside, I'm just taken aback by the beauty of it. Now that view has always been there in all the years I've lived here, it's not changed, but the trees were covering it up. So all the trees we had took down when Thomas uh, come to do the work for us really opened this area up and I just can't believe it I just can't it almost makes me feel like I'm in a different country if that makes any sense not a different country as in the United States or a different country but a different country the way Pap would have used it he used it to talk about you know in this country talking about right here at Brasstown not meaning the whole United States so I just love it every time I come out I never get tired of looking at it And see very exciting there's a little squash I've not even been out here to notice that in the last day or so I've been outside but I just hadn't been in this part of the garden so that is very very exciting this is our carrots and parsnips they're continuing to look really good I hope there's parsnips and carrots growing really good below all that beautiful green this one row that doesn't look like there's anything in it, that's where I planted some flowers, some dill, and some basil. And I have forgot to come down here and water it when I've been watering my other seeds, so I need to do that. So then hopefully they'll come up. Our little winter squash, they're all doing good. They're growing, starting to put out runners even, a couple of them. Mr. Banks is taking a rest in the compost pile as he searches for something to pounce on, I'm sure. I think he's seeing imaginary stuff this morning. I think he's playing games. Evidence of the little buck I was talking about, I'm sure. Matt, come with me down at the big garden to check on it. You can see our corn looks great. It's growing. Well, we're definitely going to be knee high by 4th of July, so we've achieved that. This is our row of potatoes. They're looking really great. You can see that one's blooming and a lot of them are about to squash and zucchini we planted down here is up and growing we can definitely use some rain though i'm sure although when i look down here the ground's not that dry we did get that one thunderstorm so i know that helped this is the peanut beans that we planted for granny so they're looking good and the okra is just now starting to come up down here and this growth, you can see, is a really nice bed of ragweeds that we're growing, right, Matt? <laughs> a huge bed of weeds that needs to be dug up, hoed up, tilled up, something up. Watermelons I got from 
Pat and Betty that I planted down here, they're looking pretty good too, other than they've just been overtook by weeds. I need to get down here and weed them. In fact, look, Matt found us a little watermelon. There's the first little watermelon. Matt also found something really sad. Corey's Mother Day's, Mother's Day beans has been eaten. So the deer has definitely found them. Do you see deer tracks though, Matt, down here? Is it deer? Huh? Oh, okay, right here, a whole, whole row of them, he said. I was thinking maybe it was rabbits, but I guess it's deer. Matt's trailing the deer. He says they're coming from the creek right around through here. Got him a little trail straight to Corey's beans. You can see where he's eat them on top, and then they're beginning to come back out. Oh, another really exciting thing. Look, there's a morning glory. Isn't it beautiful? And what I can't wait for is for those morning glories to grow in the corn. And then I'm going to go in the middle of them and get me a seat and sit down, take me a chair, and just sit there and enjoy it. Cornfield is one of the most beautiful places, if you ask me. There is a tremendous amount of grapes down here, too, on the vines that my grape vines that my brother planted. They are just covered up. The deer apparently don't like them, or so far. Even though we've not had much water, much rain, you can see, I don't know if it shows up on here, but I can see the the dew. We have heavy dews here. So this whole top of this little upturned uh, container is wet with dew. So that's one thing that really helps us too in this area. Even when it's dry, that we have those heavy dews. The mullein that we planted last year Actually, we planted it two years ago, now that I think about it. I can't remember, but the first year it didn't do, I guess it has been two years. The first year it just kept its little rosette on the on the ground. But this year it's actually put up its stalk. It's going to bloom. So that is so exciting. Now, I know mullein grows <laughs> wild everywhere. It's a weed. I see it as I drive through Brasstown. But there was never a good place for me to stop and actually get some and then also there's none that I've seen growing right here in my holler or I would have just got it and transplanted it and the reason we wanted mullein is because it's such a good medicinal plant now I've never used it for that but I'm told that it is especially for thinking about congestion and colds and things like that so I have a recipe that someone shared with me so I hope that I'm able to make that if not this year then looking forward to next year well, I hope you enjoyed seeing how our gardens are growing. They are just, this time of the year, they're just so exuberant. And everywhere you look, things are just bursting forth with blooms and uh, the promise of those little cucumbers and the blueberries and the grapes getting ripe. Uh, even my mullein, uh, the one that we were just talking about. Such an uh, amazing, enjoyable time of the year in the garden. And I've really, really enjoyed the garden more this year than I did uh, last year, of course, because this time last year, Miss Cindy was dying. You know, we were worrying about her. This is actually, at the end of this week, will be a year. Our death anniversary, the first one, is this week. So, such a different time, different frame of mind. We didn't have time to worry about the garden. I sure didn't have time to enjoy it like I have this year. And... Uh, just such a, a different time, so I'm sure that that's why I've, this year I've just really embraced every aspect of it, even uh, the pesky deer and the um, probably knowing the squash bugs are coming after my cucumbers. I've still just embraced every part of it. I'm sure I've enjoyed it more this year too, just different frame of mind, like I said, not mourning Miss Sandy, not knowing that she was going to die, and then also Granny doing so well. You know, uh, I'm not saying that the cancer's completely gone, but she's definitely beat it back, and hopefully it's gone long enough to let Granny live out the rest of her days, and um, she's just doing wonderful. And then, of course, getting to be a grandmother. This is the year that I've become a grandmother, so such a, a wonderful uh, blessing all those things are. And uh, like I like to say, gardening is so much like life. So sometimes you are up on the up on the mountain, and sometimes you're down in the deep, dark hollers, like we were last year with Miss Cindy. And 
Um, that's just the nature of life and to be able to, to notice and see the things around you and be grateful for them uh, is really a treasure if, you, if you're able to do that and really a skill that I'm so glad that Pap uh, instilled in me for sure. I, I know later today me and Matt will be down there uh, figuring out what to do about the deer eating Corey's beans and hoping to protect the rest of our garden from them. I wonder if it's if it's just the buck, but then Matt told me he'd seen three, like three does going through, maybe two does and a little one. So uh, he'd seen them not in the garden, but going up the road about a week ago, so it might be them. Anyway, we'll be down there figuring out what we can do. But even knowing that, uh, you know, the deer have nibbled Corey's beans my enthusiasm for this year's garden has not diminished i'm just so in love with every part of it from the corn to the mullein that might bloom for the first time this year even though it's just a weed considered a weed especially to all the bounty that we're going to get to eat and i'm going to get to put up to feed my family it's an amazing feeling i'm very blessed and i'm very thankful for all that god's done for me I hope that you'll keep dropping back by for these garden tours so that you can see how our garden progresses and if, I guess, we manage to ward off the deer.